Hello and welcome back to our data project series from Rotten Tomatoes. In the previous videos, we completed data pre-processing and built machine learning models using the decision tree classifier algorithm and saw some impressive performance. We further optimized our performance using the random forest classifier. In this video, we will improve our model's performance using random forest classifier with feature selection and weighted random forest classifier with feature selection. So in the previous video, we discovered that there are several features that are deemed unimportant by our random forest model for making predictions such as PG-13 or PG, G, and NC-17. Consequently, let's remove these less significant features and see if it improves the model's performance. So in this code, we are dropping the unimportant features like NR, PG-13, R, PG, G, and NC-17. And then we split the data again into train and test and print the sizes. So as you can see, the size of the training data is 13,613 and the size of test data is 3,404. With the revised more streamlined features, let's retrain our random forest classifier. So this process exemplifies feature selection where we add or remove features to improve the model's performance. Now, let's evaluate whether the performance of our random forest classifier improves after the feature selection. In this code block, we initialize the random forest classifier and we train it on the updated training data. We will then use the trained model to make predictions on the test data and calculate the accuracy score and the classification report and then we print the results, and then we finally print the confusion matrix. So here's the whole code, let's run that. So after feature selection, we can see that our model's performance has increased to an accuracy of 99.1%, as opposed to the previous. The false positive and false negative rates of our model predictions have also slightly decreased compared to the previous model. This demonstrates that having more features doesn't necessarily lead to better models. So, some unimportant features may introduce noise, negatively impacting the accuracy of the model's predictions. Now that our model has reached 99.1% accuracy, we might wonder if it can be improved further. So let's explore this possibility in the next section, which is Weighted Random Forest Classifiers with Feature Selection. In the data pre-processing section, we mentioned that our labels are slightly imbalanced. So we have three distinct label values, rotten represented by zero, fresh represented by one, and certified fresh represented by two. So here's the code for visualizing the label distribution again. As you can see, here is the distribution for rotten, fresh, and certified fresh. Clearly, the amount of data with certified fresh label is much less than the amount of data we have for the rotten label. So imbalanced data is data where basically there are many observations of some type and very few observations of another type. To address this data imbalance issue, we can use methods like the SMOT or synthetic minority oversampling technique for oversampling the minority class or supplying class weight information to the model during the training process. SMOT is an algorithm that performs data augmentation by creating synthetic data points based on the original data points. In this notebook, we will apply the second approach by assigning class weights to each label. The idea is that classes with fewer labels will have higher weights than those with more frequent labels. We can calculate class weights using scikit-learn's compute class weight method. And here's a code for that. And let's run that. So as shown here, class zero, which is rotten, has the smallest weight, while class two, certified fresh, has the largest weight. We can now provide this weight information when initializing our random forest classifier. So let's create a new random forest model with the class weight information, train it on the training set, make predictions on the test data, and print the accuracy score and confusion matrix. So in this code block, we initialize the random forest classifier with the class weight information, 
train it on the training data, make predictions, then we calculate the accuracy score, classification report, and we finally plot the confusion matrix as we did before. Okay, and let's run that. Okay, here we are. After applying the class weights, the performance of our model has increased to an accuracy of 99.2%. So the number of correct predictions for the fresh label has also increased by one. Using class weights is an effective way to address the data imbalance problem, as it causes our model to pay more attention to the labels with higher weights during the training process. And there we go. This marks the end of the first approach of Rotten Tomatoes Data Project. Stay tuned for the second approach where we predict our movie status based on the review sentiment. Alright, I'll see you there.